What's up everyone, welcome back to another review and this time we're taking a look at Wolf Creek 2 once again directed by Greg McLean. Okay, so I'm not going to waste no time, let's get right into it. I think Wolf Creek 2 is a vast improvement over the first movie. The first movie for what it was, I thought it was decent, I thought it was good. I think it was overrated, but I, but the movie doesn't really, that first movie doesn't really pick up steam until John Jarrett makes his way into the film. Wolf Creek 2 pretty much takes the best parts of the, of the first movie and expands it in which it pretty much f turns mick taylor more or less is the star of this movie from the word go from the second this movie starts the first 12 minutes already gets me hooked and then from then on when these two german backpackers get introduced and the character of paul gets introduced this movie is basically a long chase of mick of mick just chasing down this poor guy who is just trying to help this poor woman from meeting a grisly fate at the hands of Mick, who had previously, who had just killed her boyfriend moments earlier. <clears throat> yeah, I think Wolf Creek 2 is pretty much what the first movie should have been, which is a balls-to-the-wall horror movie in which Mick Taylor is this unrelenting force who just doesn't stop. Just when you think you out you outran him or outsmarted him, he gets yeah. you. And like I mentioned, some uh, the first 12 minutes where he kills these two cops immediately sets the tone that you're, which you're going to see, which is an ultra-violent movie that's going to make that first movie feel like a uh, feel like a, a PG-13 horror film. And the way he kills these two cops is gruesome. He blows one guy's head off with a fucking uh, rifle, then he sets another one on fire. After he be and then he sets another one on fire after he stabs him in the back. Like boom, one, two, three. Movie's off to a rock and start. Then these two German backpackers who are just you know, trekking along the outback, going to the Wolf Creek Crater. They come, they stumble. Uh, Wolf, uh, Mick uh, Taylor stumble across them. He stabs the boyfriend in the back, then chops up into little pieces, and then he, and then, and then a chase ensues with the with the girl named uh, Katarina. And this is where the character of Paul can introduce. Now Paul, he's just a random guy just driving along, minding his own business. He sees this woman in peril, trying to be a good Samaritan. <clears throat> he helps her out, and then Mick, wanting to kill Paul, accidentally shoots the girl. And basically, Mick's motivation for getting Paul was is more along the lines of. Because of Paul interfering in Mick's business, Mick accidentally killed his plaything, the German girl, who he was going to do some very just unsavory things to. And he blames Paul for this. And the entire movie is just Mick chasing Paul just to, just, just to get revenge on him in a way. Pretty much, <laughs> pretty much a, a hunter take, uh, trying to take his frustrations out on somebody who took his hunt in a way. And I like it. I thought it was good. It's simple. It's a nice long chase. It's like a horror version of the of of the Road Warrior in a way, in which <clears throat> now not not comparing Paul or Mick to Mad Max, but it's that's how it feels like, because again, it, this movie is more of a chase. It's just Paul going from different locations to different locations, doing his best to try and get away from Mick, and Mick always one upping him till we finally get to the third act when you get to this uh, when you get to one of the best scenes in the whole movie. In which they're doing, in which uh, Mick and Paul do like a pop trivia type of deal, in which Paul gets maybe the first couple of questions right, but Mick being Mick, he, there's always there's always an, there's always something up his sleeve, and basically, if Mick is going to ask Paul ten questions about Australia, <clears throat> Paul gets them right, he goes. Paul gets some wrong, he loses his fingers. He lost two. Paul lost two of his fingers. Uh, the first the first one. He technically got the right answer, but he didn't give the answer that Mick wanted. So off goes a finger. The second finger, Paul uh, couldn't name a uh, famous Australian cricket player. So that's another finger taken. Now, leading up to the whole cutting of the fingers, I actually like this scene. Paul pretty much uses his intelligence and knowledge of Australia to kind of break Mick, to kind of get into Mick, to kind of like uh, get into Mick's head right away and kind of buy, and buy himself some time. So that way he can think of a way to escape. <clears throat> I like it. It shows the intelligence of the Paul character, which is what makes him 10 times more likable than the three nameless schmucks from the first movie who I knew nothing about. <clears throat> At least with Paul, he's a better character. He's a better written character. He's resourceful. He's got some knowledge. He's got knowledge. He uses intelligence to outsmart Mick for a couple of, for, for a good couple of minutes to buy himself some time. I like the character of Paul. I thought he was actually really good. He's one of the best parts of this movie. And I thought the actor who played Paul was actually really good. I like the chemistry with him and uh, John Jarrett in a lot of scenes, particularly the Aussie trivia scene. That's these two guys just chewing up, just acting off one another. It's intense, it's gripping, it's full of suspense. 
I think Greg McLean's directing in the sequel is over, is 10 times better than how it was in that first movie. Because there are a lot of good scenes in here where he's really building up atmosphere, building up suspense. He really, <clears throat> and he really builds up Mick Taylor as this unstoppable guy. Even though he's a mortal man, he feels larger than life. He feels unstoppable. And again, you have the charismatic John Jarrett who just brings this character to life. Every single scene that John Jarrett is in in Wolf Creek 2, you can tell this man is just reveling in playing this character. You could, this man truly loves playing the character of Mick Taylor because he gets to like, he gets to just be free and he gets to just go as crazy and wild as he possibly can. And you, and you, as, and as, as a viewer, you're enjoying watching John Jarrett just, just act like this crazy Australian lunatic. <clears throat> Minus the brutal killing, which he does a fair share of in this movie. <clears throat> so yeah, I, I, I like it. Again, I like it. The whole third act, I think the whole third act was actually really well done. I love the, I like the mixed chase of Paul in his underground tunnel tavern. Almost like a tavern of horrors where Paul is running all around, going through dead ends, seeing these emaciated people just be binded and tortured and rotting. And... I also want to clarify something. In my Wolf Creek review, I said that Mick Taylor didn't really have any motivation. Yeah, if I actually paid attention, the man's actually a xenophobe, but he's a, he's a xenophobe to foreign people. But at least in the sequel, you kind of get more to that. More along the line, more or less, Mick Taylor is one of those guys who is Australian to the point where everyone, anyone who comes into his country, he views them as vermin. He views them as people who are not allowed to be here. And he pretty much considers it his job to rid the world of foreigners, whoever come to Australia. Hey, listen, it ain't the world's greatest motivation, but Mick Taylor, you can't get no more any more Australian than this man. So, yeah, it makes sense that he would be a xenophobic, <laughs> he would be a xenophobic madman whose only way to, to rid the world of these people is to kill them <laughs> and make them disappear in a way. <clears throat> So yeah, listen, it's ridiculous, but hey, it's something to latch on to. And, it, and it's in line with, the char with, Mick, with Mick's character. Because you can, you can buy the fact that a person, a real life version of Mick Taylor, would have just that warped sense of, uh, of, nation of, national of nationality to his country or something like along those lines. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, I don't want to say a whole lot more because i liked wolf creek too i enjoyed this movie i liked the acting from not only from not only john jared but from the actor roger core i believe his name is who played the character of paul i thought these two guys were really really good of uh, the supporting cast they're fine too like there's a good chunk of this movie where it's mostly in german with these two tourists and i thought they were fine i actually i buy them as being like a very loving couple who are just trying to enjoy life they came across as likable Unlike the other three idiots who came across as just boring and bland and forgettable. <laughs> At least these three guys that make us honey down, I bought into it. I thought they were more or less well well done, well acted, and better written. <clears throat> I love the horror. I love the suspense. I love the, the direction of cinematography. There's this cool shot where Mick is chasing Paul and Mick is on horseback. And there's this beautiful shot of him on a horse as the sun is setting and he's in pure silhouette. It looks absolutely stunning, gorgeous, and amazing. Again, I think the cinematography as a whole in this movie looks great. Now, I think Greg McLean was smart enough to know that he was never going to capture that documentarian type of feel with that first movie. So he pretty much made a more polished and he made he pretty much made a more polished movie. And guess what? To me, it works because visually, from an aesthetic standpoint, you can get more out of a, you can get more out of it. And you can use the polished cinematography to your advantage if you're, if you're talented enough. And I thought. Greg McLean used it to the best of his abilities to get, get some cool shots out of it. Again, the silhouette shot with the horse was great. The whole the whole underground uh, tunnel is all is, mo is mostly done in shadow and it's beautifully done. Suspenseful as fuck. Rich in atmosphere. I love it. <clears throat> so yeah, Wolf Creek 2 to me gets a solid 8 out of 10. I thought this was light years better than the first. I, I, I dare say I thought this movie was damn good. I enjoyed the hell out of it. Makes me want to see Wolf Creek 3 to be honest with you. <clears throat> So yeah, those are my thoughts on Wolf Creek 2. Let me know your thoughts in the comment sections down below. Like the video and subscribe, and I'll check you back next time for more.